On this episode of Game Shack, we begin our virtual pinball cabinet build, starting with the cab itself. Coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome on back into the Game Shack. I am your humble host, JDV for EvilGeniusEntertainment.com. Uh, thanks for stopping by, it really does mean a lot to us. If you like this kind of stuff, give us a thumbs up. It does help us make more videos like this. Subscribe if you haven't hit the notification bell. You guys are this channel's primary sponsors. Okay, without further ado, this is the first in a series of videos that I'm doing showing you guys how to make your very own state-of-the-art 4K virtual pinball game for right around $2,000, assuming you have a few things, including tools, and I'll get into that in a second. Now, there are no plans for this. I sort of just made this up off the top of my head using mostly stuff that you can get from Lowell's and or pinball supply place. I use Marco's Pinball, they're very good. I'm gonna have a list of everything that I use down below, uh, including some of the uh, computer components, the programming, all that kind of stuff, where you can go to get this stuff. But primarily, I just sort of just did this off the top of my head, so there are no plans, I will try to uh, tell you guys what the measurements are as we go along. To build your own cab isn't that hard if you have any kind of woodworking experience. I used pine on this build instead of MDF for a couple of reasons, mostly because it's lighter and stronger. There are some negatives to that though because you can see the kind of the wood grain. Uh, you can definitely tell that uh, it's not as smooth as MDF is. However, its strength and lightness was appealing to me. And also I could go down to Lowell's and get it easily and put it in the back of my car. So if you have any questions about anything, please let me know and I will try to answer them. Right off the bat, if you are not as comfortable making your own stuff, I will say that for under $1,000, you can jump into the Game Room Solution version of this cab. They make, I think, a 32 and a 43 inch. This particular build has a 43 inch screen in it, which is actually very close to real pinball screen size and when you compare this to a real pinball game it compares very nicely the back box of course and everything it, it, it will be able to fool a lot of your friends and even yourself after you play it for a while into thinking that it's real pinball so if you do have any questions about measurements or anything i will try to answer you again all the supplies i buy will be done in the description down below eventually <laughs> anyway one other note before i jump in now, some of the video I did of this kind of got trashed right off the bat. I'm gonna be showing you um, kind of how I made this initial cut here on this angle. But everything else is there. And I do think that you will be able to build this main cabinet after watching this video, at least I hope so. All right, without further ado, let's jump on into it and show you guys how I built the cabinet for this virtual pinball game. Okay, here you can see the wood that I got from Lowell's and this really nice pine. I think these were, I don't know, $15 each, $20 each. Anyway, they're identical. They're uh, basically four foot long and 16 inches tall. I used two pieces for the sides. I used a piece for the bottom and another piece for the front and back piece. Here you can see the close up of the uh, label if you actually want to pick that up. Here you can see the wood that I I uh, use my little saw to cut off to give me a nice 10 degree angle aiming down. This gave me enough room that I could have my flipper buttons and my, my legs right here and still have enough room, but still give that illusion of that angle so the ball would come down. And you can kind of see what it would look like if I hadn't done that, it would just be kind of almost like a coffin. So this cut is a little bit more than a yard long. So up here, this is six inch, so this is flat. So you can see after about six inches, then I just start taking that angle down about a 10 degree angle. And I end up here shaving off about five, well, yeah, five inches exactly. So if you mark your wood down here, uh, five inches down and five and a half, six inches out from the top, right? So you come out, you leave that normal, and you begin your cut at five and a half, six inches, and then you make your way down to five inches down, and that will give you a nice little angle. I wish I had the original video of that, but I did lose it, so sorry about that. All right, here are the actual measurements of my final cab, if that's any use to you. Again, you can make this to your own uh, desires, but this is the kind of the design that I thought would look good. So here I am just drilling in the pilot holes and seeing if the screws are gonna work uh, that I have. I just had just screws laying around.
Again, just take your time. No rush, drill your pilot holes, and then make sure that the screws you know, aren't gonna split the wood when you put them in. So this is the bottom piece, that's the side piece there. I think you guys can see that lip that I try to have running down the length of the hole. Just a little bit of a lip. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back the screws out a little bit and I'm gonna put a bead of wood glue. I use tight bond. I tend to use that the most. It's just a little bit cheaper and just as good as the, it's like eh, four fifty, five bucks, something like that. And there's no way you'll use this much glue on this. I mean, we're just gonna be putting glue there, there, and on the front and back piece. So you won't need a lot of it, but you should go out and spend five bucks and get it. All right, let's just set that down. So I'm just gonna put a real thin bead. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. And that's really all you should need to do in combination with these screws to make a very, very, very tight fit. And as I hope, the screws just kind of went right back in for me. Again, a lot of evils are gonna be covered up with trim and graphics. At least that's the hope. So basically, I'm just going to repeat the process from this side to that side, but it's made a little bit easier because now we have this standing up here. You might be able to see the glue just dripping down a little bit. Just make sure it's not getting all over your carpet if you're doing it on carpet or something like that. Other than that, you buy, you know, we'll give it 24 hours and this thing will be set up really, really nice and tight for you. All right, so this is a little top-down view of where we're at so far. Here's the side wall that we just installed. This, of course, is the bottom of the cabin. That's and this is the new piece. Whoops, let's make sure we put that where we need to put it. Okay. And let's just see if this is going to fit together the way we should. Just I kind of eyeballing it. And yeah, we're okay. And this is the back of the machine. I'm probably actually going to cut this completely out when I'm all done and everything's all set. But for now, I'm going to keep it just because it'll add stability to the project as we're kind of going along. Uh, this is a little trick too. Sometimes if things don't fit perfectly one way, just go ahead and flip the board over and see, look, that already fits better than it did before. So sometimes the easiest little things can save you so much time. Okay, I'm gonna put it in a screw because that's just gonna help me with the whole thing. And there you go. Again, we're just, just going this step by step, no big rush. All right, so there we go. There is the first screw on the other side done. I'm just gonna go ahead and go down all the way, then back it all out, glue it, re-screw it, and then I'm gonna put it on the front and the back pieces. Again, I'm trying to, just, just using my finger here, just to push that, gets a little, gives me a little bit more. I can bring it up the board here. So less chance of cracking that too. So I'm not pushing it too far into the next board. I'm going all the way through the first straight board here and just a little bit into there. So that'll give these little screws enough bite so that they can kind of dig into the wood without uh, having to screw into it or drill into it too much. Be careful you don't over tighten here. I'm just barely tapping it. Get a screwdriver if you have any die. Okay, so I'm gonna put in another two then I'm gonna back it out and there we go. So I have all four screws on right now and it's nice and flush. I just have my little lip here to match the lip on the other side. Again, it's just a little tiny bit, no big deal. You could have it be perfectly flush. You could have it come up quite a bit, uh, but I wanna save as much room in here as I can for the monitor, for the solenoids, and just so there's enough airflow around that monitor. So I'm not going in too far. Again, very, very little. I'm gonna do what I did before and I'm gonna back out the screws just pull it away, put a nice bead of wood glue on, 
put it back, screw it back in, and then I'm gonna move on to the front and back pieces, and then this part of the build, the initial box is done. So we're almost there. Give it a nice healthy bead. Right, so now let's go ahead and reattach the sides. So here's the bottom. Just gonna go ahead and clean up that glue right there. All right, so we cut two pieces, both for the front and back, and they're identical. So, but you know, the wood being the way it is, is of course organic. So sometimes things are just gonna fit a little better than others. So I'm gonna save both pieces. This one looks like a no so far. I'll flip it over. That is actually looking pretty close, to be honest with you. This one looks to be a little bit too big for the front. I'll try flipping it just to make sure, but this one might have to go in the back anyway. And it looks like it does. It's just, it's just cut a little bit too long. I might even have to trim this one anyway, but again, it's going in the back now. So I don't care so much about that. I'm gonna just put that aside. Try this other guy in again, again. So this would this would be the very front of the cab here. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, we're getting there. Okay, we're this is actually very close. This is all decently close. You know, again, if you're buying something from a place like Game Room Solutions, it's gonna be a better fit than this. But after the graphics and everything are on this, I, the, remember there's gonna be legs right here and everything, so it's, there is a little bit of room for slob. Which is good, because I ain't no carpenter. All right, so now I'm gonna to have to trim this little part off here. I don't know if you guys can see that mark. It's just a little off to match the angle there. So I'm gonna to try to rip this going down at an angle, so hopefully I'll be able to do that with my saw. All right, I'm just gonna use my T-square here and mark off. This should be just a, okay. I think that's what they call the government work close enough. So I'll just show you guys, in, ca in case you don't know, the front of your circular saw, most of them are gonna have this little thing here where you can adjust the angle of the cut. All right, so I'm gonna try to match this. There's 90, right? There's 90. So I'm gonna try to, it's gonna probably just be like that. It's just gonna be a little bit off, right? So just a little bit off so I can get that nice juicy angle. Let's hope. All right, so hopefully you can kind of see what I'm talking about there. I mean, there's just it's a slight angle here, right? And then I just gonna I want to cut it and follow that line all the way down the traverse of this wood. So it's just a little tiny bit. So what I'm gonna try to do is angle that saw blade just so it's the right angle. Okay, so let's see if it fits in a general sense still. Right, so this is the top, bottom, right? It's like a giant Jenga made out of the same basic stuff too. That is close enough for government work. Pretty good actually. I'm not unhappy with that and the angle is actually just about spot on. So that was 10 degrees, apparently, is the angle I took from the top of the cab down to the bottom is just about 10 degrees, if you were curious. Okay.
again, just kind of mess around with the wood. Uh, and sometimes you'll get it to fit just about perfect just by flipping it over, turning it around. That's, that's not terrible. So I think I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the pilot holes for that. This spot here will leave uh, stuff for wires to go in and air to come out. And so here's the back. So this is where we're gonna put our backboard, okay? The backboard is gonna sit right here. This is about six inches right, right here. So the backboard will sit on top of this. I might put another crossbeam in here. We'll see. This is just one of the sides of the pinball cap. And this, of course, is gonna be the front of the cab. So we'll need to put in some buttons here, plunger button, which is just gonna be a button on this build, and your flipper and your nudge button's about four and a half inches in. There's that side. You can kind of see the angle right there. All right, so that's it. Here's your basic frame for the cabinet. Now, in the next episode, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the cross pieces to lay the monitor on. I'm gonna go ahead and drill in the various holes for all the buttons. And I'll put in this little cross piece here for this little part that the lockdown bar will go onto and for our little uh, special button that we're gonna mount on the top. So we'll do all that in the next episode. All right, well, if you like this sort of content, please give me a thumbs up on the way out the door. It really does help the channel. Subscribe if you haven't, so you get notified uh, when new episodes are out. So I should have a new episode up about how to put this within the next week to <laughs> week and a half, maybe three days. So I'm just kind of filming these as I build the cab and I'm not using any kind of plans or anything. I'm just using my prior experience. All right, see you guys later. Mwah! Love each other, bye. Bye, pinball. Be sure to visit EvilGeniusEntertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.